All the dark corners in my mind that creak when someone tiptoes near, the musty, far off places that are thickly shrouded in more than traces of cobwebbiness. But don't distress, it's not a lack of interest that makes them appear thusly. It's not their uninterrupted silence that lets their walls grow dusty. It's carried out with precision, a most aesthetic decision. In fact, it's the loudest part because it houses my art. I am not an artist. I cannot paint faces or etch decent representations of places. I don't work with charcoal, wax or chalk. I cannot make my paintbrush talk. I don't breathe life into that which is still or make watercolours bend to my will. I don't sit for hours and observe some flowers. I don't have that power. I don't and I won't. I am not an artist. But am I an artist? The way I move my body is art. I am acutely aware of every part. As I walk down the street, the people I meet watch me as I go. Observe the flow of my skirt from my hips to the tips of my toes. I stand and demand attention. If I move my hand, I add another dimension. I express joy. I toy with their emotions. I dance and prance and am aware of being the fairest of them all after all. Am I an artist? I can hear music when I breathe. When I sleep, it creeps into my dreams, a melody and harmony, a song about love, a song about death, about being alone and feeling bereft, about screaming and crying and climbing the walls, about what it's like the first time you fall in love with love. It's seashells and violins, silver bells. I can sing and the notes are so clear that it scares me. People fall silent. I don't doubt they heard me if I want them to. And I want them to. Am I an artist? I love logic's edges. Twisting them, turning a conversation into an explanation. Bringing clarity, bringing truth. Searching for the rumored proof in the cloudiest moments. I put words together, tether them in such a way that it means something. I cannot put a carefully arched foot wrong. This song means all things. He sings, she sings. They are me and I am free to write what I want. They will read and not condemn, but elevate me with the best of them, damn the rest of them. I dance, I sing until I feel faint. What difference does it make if I cannot paint? I am an artist. Why do you talk so much about mental health? Ask the trolls of old, the Nicole or Laura or Michelle. Names haven't been changed to protect identities, but these people live in the far off past. A blast of memory brings them back. Why do you talk so much about mental health? Translation, why do you talk so much about yourself? <laughs> Don't hold it in, they say. Don't bottle it up. If you bottle, you'll pop one day, they say. Share it. Make us aware of it. Blare it from the rooftops so everyone can hear, as you never know which ear will be enriched here, which ear will provide empathy, not laughing, not disdainful, not simply view your admissions as painful. Why do you talk so much about mental health translation? Why do you talk so much about yourself? Because if I'm going to free the struggle, burst the bubble, and talk about mental health, I have to start with myself. The self is the sphere in which the fears take place. To give chase to these thoughts and theories, I must search this sphere for me. And you asked me to talk about it anyway. Talk to me, you said. Please talk to me. Please talk to me. Can I talk to you? Please talk to me. When can I talk to you? Uh, next Wednesday and there's the rub no matter how much you profess to love me and think that your offer is 24 7 you wouldn't notice if I wasn't here anymore because it's the talking you hear the crying for help and no one achieves attention through stealth you offer a vague in the future that can be delayed as you don't expect a date to be made I mean ask for that chat it won't come to that it's lip service and you're pretty impervious really aren't you Full disclosure. This requires maximum exposure to get through to you. Once there was a doctor, 
sat behind a locked door, a locked mind, waving my attempt in their face like a red flag, which of course it is or should be, if they asked the questions they were trained to ask, not stopping to ask if I have hobbies, <coughs> if I enjoy socialising. I am so far beyond hobbies. I have evolved into a narrow-eyed, red-eyed, bitter being. Your basket-weaving or insufferable roller derby is not for me. I look down upon it from a great height. Remember vaguely when I might have tried it. I am above it. I am close to God now and only seek to get closer. The serial overdoser choosing her time carefully, gradually putting everyone at ease so they think she'll cease it. But no longer. Urgent, the moment passes. The molasses of indecision dissipates. I go on about my fate. It's like David and Goliath, and I wet my dry mouth to talk about this more than once. Yes, more than once, to get through your head. Yes, they have to be blunt. To get through the stigma, the silent enigma, I'll repeat this rigmarole. And if you need it, I'll be your poster child. I'll sit down and talk a while and explain about what it's like to be in pain. Because people can understand it's just not really what they planned. But you'd be surprised they can open their eyes and be kindful, mindful. Remember when you used to sparkle, shineful, and they will wait for you. At a writing workshop that only four people turned out for, we were asked to describe our journey as if it was the blurb, the underdone, overdone piece on the back book cover which you shouldn't judge a book by. Others described themselves describing an arc around their kitchen table, around their secrets, around their daughters. I described myself describing an arc around myself, which should come as no surprise. I describe my journey describing myself through the eyes of others, the views of lovers, fathers and mothers, label me as shy, a common misconception you do not need to take on. I sat in the quiet, in the dark, as a field interaction or two seal my fate, too late to be a leader, always bottom feeder, always follower, hollower the longer I listened to those without the wisdom to tie their own shoes. I resisted my own voice, my own choice for too long, dreamed at night of people listening. I was a bubbling spring of thoughts of words finally being heard. Met resistance, of course, as I went off course, acting not like myself, acting out of sorts, acting like the sort of person who needed to be put in their place. A case of arrogance, too big for her fancy boots. I'm just going back to my roots. Put myself in my new place, the happy one. Tiny forest, beach with sun, through doing the things that no one expects of you, your personality, your sex, gender. I unravel, you unravel, we travel through these fables, others follow and believe, and we retrieve ourselves. Rebuild, rebuild, and be fulfilled only in self realization. You are your own creation. Okay, so you shy away from that. You're not a builder, you say. You'll pay others to do that job. And something needs to be raised to the ground to construct. Fucked if you're going to burn yourself down. But I'm not saying we're rotten inside. No need to pull the beams out, rip the seams out. There are degrees of ruin and we are all salvageable. We are our best bits, our popular hits. And we have our cruel moments sometimes reflected towards ourselves. Beat ourselves up, tie ourselves up tear our heart, and yet we still say we can't bear to try and restart, but a bit at a time you can. You can take yourself apart, not tear, not shred, but methodically unpack, extract the best parts in your loving heart and construct around. Don't think of it as a massive upheaval, think of it as soul retrieval, and there's all these mindfulness buzzwords with the lines become blurred between good advice and a twee mean, people will laugh and it seems like you're wasting time in not being cynical, clinical, cold, older than you need to be. Embrace the inner child. Take advantage of all opportunities. Say yes, know your best, know you're being true to you and do whatever you dream because there's a reason you want to, a reason inside you. 
On your blurb, in your world, where will you describe your arc? Swimming between sharks, scared to raise a ripple, kiss they'll smell the blood, or so far away from that. So far away from that. Put on your thinking cap. Tap into your hidden meaning, strip yourself bare. Figuratively, not literally, although, you know, if you want. What do you want to be? What makes you call you me? In your darkest dreams, where you fill the screen, you can be your very own homecoming queen, ageless James Dean. Whatever you got down want to be. You are what calls you me. You are what makes your me. You are supposed to be you.